First, let's check this introduction about Spring Batch. So many applications within the enterprise domain require bulk processing to perform business operations in mission critical environments. So this business's operation includes, first, we have automated complex processing of large volumes of information that is most efficiently processed without user interaction. So these operations typically include time-based events such as month-end calculations, notice, or correspondence. Then, periodic application of complex business rules processed repetitively across very large data sets. For example, insurance benefit determination or rate adjustments. And finally, integration of information that is received from internal and external systems that typically requires formatting, validation, and processing in a transactional manner into the system of record. So batch processing is used to process billions of transactions every day for enterprises. Now, let's see what is Spring Batch. So Spring Batch is a lightweight, comprehensive batch framework designed to enable the development of robust batch applications that are vital to the daily operations of enterprise systems. Spring Batch builds upon the characteristics of the Spring framework that people have come to expect, productivity, Pojo-based development approach, and general ease of use, while making it easy for developers to access and use more advanced enterprise services when necessary. Spring Batch is not a scheduling framework. There are many good enterprise schedulers such as Quartz, Tivoli, Control M, and others, available in both the commercial and open source spaces. So Spring Batch is intended to work in conjunction with a scheduler rather than replacing the scheduler itself. Spring Batch provides reusable functions that are essential in processing large volumes of records, including logging and tracing, transaction management, job processing statistics, job restart, skip, and resource management. It also provides more advanced technical services and features that enable externally high volume and high performance batch jobs through optimization and partitioning techniques. You can use Spring Batch in both simple use cases such as reading a file into a database or running stored procedures and complex high volume use cases such as moving high volumes of data between databases, transforming it and so and so forth. High volume batch jobs use the framework in a highly scalable manner to process significant volumes of information. So what is the background of Spring Batch? So while open source software projects and associated communities have focused greater attention on web-based and microservices-based architecture framework, there has been a notable lack of focus on reusable architecture frameworks to accommodate Java-based batch processing needs. Despite continued needs to handle such processing with enterprise IT environments, so the lack of a standard reusable batch architecture has resulted in the proliferation of many one-off in-house solutions developed within client enterprise IT functions. So Spring Source which is now VMware, and Accenture collaborated to change this. Accenture's hands-on industry and technical expertise in implementing batch architecture, Spring Source depth of technical experience, and Spring proven programming model together made a natural and powerful partnership to create high-quality market, relevant software aimed at filling an important gap in enterprise Java. Both companies, they worked with a number of clients who were solving similar problems by developing Spring-based batch architecture solutions. So this input provided some useful additional detail and real-life constraints that help to ensure the solution can be applied to the real-world problems posed by clients. Accenture contributed previously proprietary batch processing architecture frameworks to the Spring Batch project, along with committer resource 
to drive support enhancement and the existing feature set. So Accenture contribution was based upon decades of experience in building batch architectures with the last several generation of platforms such as COBOL on mainframes, C++ on Unix, and now Java Anywhere. So the collaborative effort between Accenture and Spring Source aimed to promote the standardization of software processing approach, frameworks and tools enterprise users can consistently use when creating batch applications. Companies and government agencies desiring to deliver standard proven solution to their enterprise IT environment can benefit from Spring Batch. The following diagram is a simplified version of the batch reference architecture that has been used for decades. So it provides an overview of the components that make up the domain language of batch processing. So this architecture framework is a blueprint that have been or that has been proven through decades of implementation on the last several generation of platforms. So Spring Batch provides a physical implementation of the layers, component and technical services commonly found in the robust maintainable systems that are used to address the creation of simple to complex batch applications with the infrastructure and the extensions to address very complex processing needs. Now let's break down each component and each part of this diagram and explain them separately. So in batch processing, we have several components. First, let's start with the job launcher. So the job launcher is simply an interface for launching a job with a given set of job parameters. So we will see later on what are job parameters and how we can pass them. And then each job launcher will launch a job. The job, it's a section that I will explain in just a few moments in details. And then each job might have or can have one or several, several steps. So here we can see step one and step N. And each step is composed of three main elements. So the first thing is an item reader. So the item reader is an abstraction that represents the retrieval of input for a step and one item at a time. So when the item reader has exhausted the items it can provide, it indicates this by returning null. So when the item reader returns null means that we no longer have records or data to read. So you can define more details about the item reader interface and its various implementation in the readers and the writers. So the item reader is able to read data from, for example, a database, a file, and so and so forth, any storage system you want. And then once we read an item, we pass it to the item processor. So the item processor is an abstraction that represents the business processing of an item. So while the item reader reads one item and the item writer writes one item, the item processor provides an access point to transform or apply other business processing. If while processing the item, it is determined that the item is not valid, returning null, indicating that the item should not be written out. You can find out more details about the item processor in the interface in readers and writers. And then finally, we have the item writer. So the item writer is an abstraction that represents the output of a step. So one batch or chunk of items at a time. Generally, an item writer has no knowledge of the input it should receive next and knows only the item that was passed it in its current invocation. You can find more details about the item writer interface and its various implementation in the readers and the writers as well. And all these three parts, job launcher, job, and the steps, they use and they communicate to the job repository. So the job repository is the, is the persistence mechanism for all of the stereotypes mentioned earlier. It provides crude operations for job launcher, job and step implementations. When a job is first launched, a job execution is obtained from the repository. 
Also, during the course of execution, step execution and job execution implementations are persisted by passing them to the job repository or to this repository. When using Java configuration, the annotation enabled batch processing annotation provides the job repository as one of the components that is automatically configured. So this is the global overview of the batch architecture. Now let's move on and break down and see how the job works. Now let's break down the job. So a job is simply a central entity that encompasses an, enti an entire batch process. So configured through XML or Java based step referred to as job configuration. It acts as the top level element in a hierarchy, organizing multiple step instances logically. These steps are grouped within the job to form a cohesive flow allowing for global configuration of properties, such as restartability. The job configuration includes the job's name, the definition and ordering of its step instances, and as specification of whether the job restarts or not. Then within a job, we have a job instance. A job instance in Spring Batch represents a distinct run of a batch job. For example, consider an end of day job meant to run daily. Despite there being a single end of day job, each run is tracked as a separate job instance, like the January 1st or January 2nd run. Even if a run fails and is rerun the next day, it retains its original identity, such as the January 1st run. So its job instance can have multiple executions, but only one job instance associated with specific job parameters at every given time. So the definition of a job instance doesn't impact data loading. That's determined by the item reader implementation. For instance, in an end of day scenario, the data may include a column indicating the effective date. The January 1st run, for instance, loads data only from the first and the January 2nd runs uses data from the second. This decision is often a business choice for the item reader to make. However, reusing the same job instance determines whether the state, for example, the execution context from prior executions is utilized. Starting a new job instance means being from the start while using an existing instance generally means resume from where you left off. And then after the job instance, we have a job execution. So a job execution in Spring Batch represents a single attempt to run a job, which can result in success or failure. The associated job instance is considered incomplete until the execution successfully completes. For instance, in the context of end of day job, if the job instance for January 1st fails on its initial run and is rerun with the same job parameters, a new job execution is generated, but only one job instance persists. So globally, a job defines what a job is and how it is to be executed. And a job instance is a purely organizational object to group executions together, primarily to enable correct restart semantics. A job execution, however, is the primary storage mechanism of what actually happened during a run and contains many more properties that must be controlled and persisted. A step is a domain object that encapsulates an independent sequential phase of a batch job. Therefore, every job is composed entirely of one or more steps. So a step contains all the information necessary to define and control the actual batch processing. So this is necessarily vague description because the contents of any given steps are the discretion of the developer writing a job. So a step can be as simpler or as complex as the developer desires. So a simple step might load data from a file into database requiring little or no code, depending upon the implementation used. A more complex step may have complicated business rules that are applied as part of the processing. As with a job, a step has an individual step execution that correlates with a unique job execution. 
So a step execution represents a single attempt to execute a step. A new step execution is created each time a step is run, similar to the job execution. However, if a step fails to execute because the step before it fails, no execution is persisted for it. A step execution is created only when each step is actually st started. And step executions are represented by objects of the step execution class. Each execution contains a reference to its corresponding step and job execution and transaction related data, such as commit or rollback counts and start and end time. Additionally, each step execution contains an execution context, which contains any data a developer needs to have persisted across batch runs, such as statistics or state information needed to restart.